Hi there, I'm Alberto Savoia and welcome to number one in a new series of lectures. This series is about Apex Innovators and Apex Innovation and more specifically how to become an Apex Innovator. So this is a lecture number one where I kind of set down uh, the, the, the basic uh, criteria and, and what you can expect from uh, this series. So first of all, what are Apex Innovators? You know, it's a, it's a term that I define as follows. Apex Innovators are companies that are already large and successful and that are maintaining and increasing their rank in their industry or as we shall see in multiple industry through relentless innovation by being Apex Innovators. So one prerequisite already large and successful and they continue to stay large and successful and become even larger and more successful through very, very aggressive innovation. Now, as you may know, the term apex refers to the top of a hierarchy. Uh, for example, in the jungle, we have the apex predators who are at the top of the food chain, right? The, uh, the lions and the lionesses. So when it comes to industry and business, apex innovators are the top one or 2% in terms of innovativeness. And because, and this is the whole key of why this is important, because they are top one or 2% in terms of innovation, they're also top one or two percent in terms of performance. So these are super successful companies that are becoming even more successful year after year, breaking all kinds uh, of records. Just to give you an idea, let's, I need to give you some concrete example. What are some of these companies? Let's pick the first letter of the alphabet, A, like A for Apex. Uh, I would consider the following companies to be Apex innovators, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, you know, the, the holding company uh, of Google. And why are they Apex innovators? Well, that's what I want to discuss in this first lecture. Uh, and in order to introduce and explain what makes an innovator or a company an Apex innovators, we have to understand the concept of innovation potential. So what is innovation potential? If you take a company, a company has a bunch of different distinct resources, each of each of which has value. So first of all, all they have all their employees, right? Uh, a bunch of employees. Uh, the companies that I talked of have probably, you know, in the tens of thousands uh, plus employees. But yeah, even you can be an apex innovator in a specific industry with just say hundreds or, or maybe a thousands of employees, but you cannot be two people in a garage starting a company. So one of your resources is all of your employees each of whom has specific knowledge, know-how, skills, each of whom has ideas, here's a light bulb, right, of things that they could do to move forward the company. They have their own ideas uh, for innovation and their, their education, et cetera, et cetera. What else is part of a, a, a innovation potential? Well, a company's financial resources, right? Some of these companies we talked about have uh, billions tens of billions, hundreds of billions in the bank. You don't need to be at that level, but you know you do need to have the ability to make some uh, investment. As we shall see, you don't need to invest a lot per idea or per innovation, but you need to do a lot of experiments. But that's coming a little later. So they have, they have a bunch of people. Each of these people has specific idea. These companies have a lot of money. What else do they have? Well, you know, they have uh, factories, right? This is my example of the factory. They have, they have physical resources, they have laboratories, uh, uh, factories, um, you know, retail spaces if they're retailers or, you know, an internet presence, computers, uh, a bunch of other things. What else do they have? Well, they have a market brand name and recognition, right? The ratings, you know, five-star rating thing. Oh, this is a great company. I like to use them. Something else that they have is partnerships, right? So they, have, they may be partnering with other companies that may have done so for a long time and they can leverage uh, those things. They have intellectual property in the forms of patents, you know, and a bunch of other things. So when you think about it, uh, these large companies have enormous innovation potential, right? Uh, tens of thousands of employees, hundreds of thousands of ideas, billions of dollars in the bank, the resources to pretty much build anything. The innovation potential is gigantic. In fact, here's a, here's a simple test. I love to ask people this question. Take one of the three companies I mentioned, actually any one of them, Amazon, Apple, or Alphabet. Uh, 
Google. Think and think yourself, is there any market or industry that one of these companies couldn't possibly enter it? Yeah, I, I really have a hard time answering uh, that question because there's no product, no service that I can't imagine, you know, a, an Apple, a Google, a, 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 an Amazon not being able to enter it. And in fact, that's what's happening all the time, right? These companies continually enter uh, to market, uh, uh, new, new markets, kind of wrecking havoc on the existing uh, market. So innovation potential, these companies have gigantic innovation potential. Now, who else has gigantic innovation potential? Companies here, the average innovators. Also the innovators, but these this companies don't seem very interested. You know, they think that they're safe. They're totally wrong, but they're not interested. So average innovators also have this amazing potential. Some of them, up until recently, they had as much as an innovation potential as the, uh, as the apex innovator. The problem is that they do not use this potential. So let's assume that this circle here represents the innovation potential. Remember the combination of all your people, your resources, your knowledge, uh, your IP. How do most companies innovate, right? The one here, the average innovator, even the above average innovator. Well, you know, let's, let's draw a little circle here. You know, let's call this their core competency. Uh, remember a big term, business term, good business term uh, many years ago. So what uh, average innovators do, they innovate, of course, they have to innovate to some extent, but they innovate, you know, inside their core competency, kind of uh, timidly, you know, they have some innovation here. Now, this was a strategy that was good maybe 10, 20 years ago. Now it's no longer good. Why? Because there are this thing, the apex innovators have entered this market. So if these are the average innovators, what do the apex innovators do? First of all, they innovate even more aggressively inside their core competency. But most interesting, they go out of their core competency, right? So they, they go here, they go here. They take big bets in markets where you would think they had absolutely no business being in. So let me give you a, an example. As you may notice, for just for this video, I'm wearing two watches. Here's a Rolex and here's an Apple watch. Now, why am I wearing uh, two watches and why a Rolex? Because for decades, Rolex was the number one watch company in the planet in terms of revenue, status, and everything. You know, it, it was just top of the hierarchy. And you know, by the way, Rolex, a very innovative uh, company. But guess what? There is another company called Apple that uh, had nothing to do with watches, right? Apple started by making computers and then okay, introduced the iPod and then the, uh, then the iPhone and, and so on and so forth. And at some point, Apple decided to play the innovation by combination game. That will be another one, uh, another video for you, where they, they took the watch and they thought, okay, let's combine our technology, our ability to build, say, the iPhone. Let's have a small version of an iPhone, you know, that fits on a wrist and you can put a wristband. And they came up with a watch. So at the beginning, you know, being in the watch industry was well outside the core competency for Apple. Uh, but they could do it because why not? I mean, App Apple could develop it. And in fact, they developed the watch. And what has happened? Over a short span, I think uh, three or four years from being nowhere, uh, Apple started to climb the, the hierarchy of the watch industry. Uh, I think a year or two ago, it surpassed Rolex. So Rolex was king of the jungle uh, of the watches. Now it doesn't uh, hold that position uh, any longer. And in fact, I read that this year, Apple, uh, Apple Watch kind of outsold uh, the entire, in terms of revenue, the entire Swiss mechanical watch industry. So that's what Apex innovators do, right? So Apple may have started here initially making computers and then the iPod. And you know, an iPhone is like an iPod with, a, uh, with a, some uh, cellular phone and just went out. Another example, Google uh, Alphabet going into self-driving cars. So Google at the time that they launched their self-driving project, maybe had 50,000 employees, some of whom, like uh, Sebastian Tran, had a passion and expertise and interest in self-driving cars. So, you know, they thought, well, you know, why not? 
I started at Google in 2001 with the company, all they had was uh, uh, ads uh, and, uh, and search. Actually, that's what they had at the time. And if you told me, you know, Alberto, in a, a 10, 15 years, Google is gonna go into self-driving cars, I would say, you're crazy. What is Google is a company whose mission is to organize the world's information and to make it universally useful and accessible. You know, that's so outside our core competency. And yet, and that's exactly what Apex Innovators do. They go outside of their market because they take full advantage of their innovation potential. So that's the first lesson for you. I don't want to keep them uh, too long. So key takeaways from this lesson. In the hierarchies of companies and, uh, and innovation, there is a group, the top one or two percent, which are called the Apex Innovators. And because they are Apex Innovators, top one or two percent in terms of innovation, this company are also the top one or two percent in terms of performance and, 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 and growth metric. And one of the things that distinguishes the Apex Innovator from the average uh, innovators is that, first of all, they both have this great innovation potential, but the average innovator kind of tend to stick to their market, to their industry, to their business, and innovate kind of timidly around it. While Apex Innovators that take big risks, they innovate very aggressively inside their core market, but they also go way, way outside. Why? Because we can. Why did Google get into the uh, self-driving car business? Because it could. Why did Apple start to make watches? Because it could. Why is Amazon getting into the, into the pharmacy and prescription business? Because it can, right? So this is what Apex Innovators do, and this is what you need to do in order to become an Apex Innovator. Now, in future lessons, I'm gonna give you more details of how to do it. However, if you want to learn everything that you need about Apex Innovator in one, just one condensed uh, workshop, you know, go to my website, contact me, albertosavoya.com, uh, and we can talk about it. But in the meantime, I will keep giving you some of these short uh, uh, lessons. I hope you enjoyed it and you come back for lesson number two. Thank you. Bye-bye and good luck.